Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News, where I can't believe I actually managed to find three stories to cover the day after Christmas. Usually a wasteland of movie news, but thanks to Instagram uh, for two of these stories actually, and a last minute press release from Six Entertainment. All right, so let's get started with uh, uh, our first uh, Instagram story. I guess one's more attributable to Twitter, but thank you. I guess I'm grateful for social media this year. But anyway, uh, The Rock Instagrammed a picture of himself and Henry Cavill having a drink together. And he said that it was a Black Adam and Superman team up. And of course, that triggered a lot of DCEU fans, uh, as it was totally intended to. And because it's a light news cycle, uh, even Entertainment Weekly, for instance, picked up the photo. And I got a number of you asking me about it. But I have to say, I honestly think that it's just a promotion for the drinks that they have in front of them, right? Because who sits down with the actual bottle, right? Label out. Uh, I don't think they did a fantastic job putting the label out, but it's there. So I'm sure it qualifies uh, in their contractual obligations to, to take said photo. Uh, and hey, you know, particularly, you know, The Rock has a whole social media business going. Good for him. And Henry Cavill, you know, he does a lot of charity on his Instagram, I think, much to his credit. But also, the guy's got to bring in some money, right? I mean, all, all uh, actors do that, particularly the ones that aren't at a huge level outside of The Rock because he, The Rock has an extraordinary, strong, extraordinarily strong following. Uh, but uh, Henry Cavill is at the other end of the spectrum where, you know, the roles aren't exactly, you know, pouring in for him the offers so you can't really fault him for making a little money on the side it's a whole industry in fact for celebrities on social media to promote things and they get quite a hefty amount of money so i thought it was uh, very funny that it was so obviously uh, a drink you know an alcohol promotion uh, because again they're they're posing with their drink of choice right they could have just had the drinks in their hands but no however I do think it's a nice photo, and I, I cover this story for two reasons. One, a lot of you asked me about it, uh, and I do think The Rock looks pretty villainous there. I think he looks kind of Black Adam-y, which is pretty awesome. Although I think they'll probably end up going with the Black Adam as an anti-hero route. You know, the villain you love to hate, who's sometimes good. Like a little, a little bit like Loki. But the other reason I wanted to cover this story is it gave me an excuse to promote Henry Cavill's Instagram. I fall. I don't follow a lot of. I'm, I'm new to Instagram, so you know, uh, occasionally something, an opportunity for me to follow someone will come up, and I just will. And for some reason, I'm following Henry Cavill. I don't remember what made me click on him in the first place, but he's been particularly active over the last couple of weeks for Christmas. And I have to say, his Instagram feed is the best thing that he's doing. I think that he's ever done actually in his career. It's amazing he's so likable on it and a lot i think a lot sexier and accessible than he is in his movies there's just something there's like a, a spark to his instagram that i wish they could capture with him as superman i'm like where's this guy in the dceu movies he's awesome he could compete with ben affleck for you know screen charisma but the way that he's styled i mean maybe he shouldn't do such a good job combing his hair even in this photo with the rock the rock outshines him unfortunately but when henry cavill is left to his own devices or with his social media team whoever's filming him in these videos when he's not filming himself they're really spectacular so i i hope that someone you know on his team or a director that he ends up working with will take a look at the feed and be like why is this so good and why aren't your movies showing this side of you? It's just really excellent. So I would encourage you to follow Henry Cavill on Instagram and see what I'm talking about. And uh, it'll give you, I think, a much greater appreciation for him as a talent. And it gives you some idea of what maybe people see in him. Perhaps Henry Cavill is, like, is, as we like to say, good in a room. You know, you're like, this guy's awesome. And then you get, you, you know, you look at your, your dailies and you're like, why isn't it translating into my movie? Darn it. All right. So anyway, that's the first story of the day. So it was a nice little DCEU promotion, but I don't think it had anything to do with Warner Brothers. I don't think DCEU even knew about it. I think these guys got together um, and used their links, their link to the DCEU to make some money on the side. All right. So that's the first story of the day. The second story of the day is about Jennifer Lawrence on social media, not making money, but giving money away and I think that this was such a wonderful story and it couldn't have happened to her well a little bit too late because passengers is crashing and burning at the box office we're probably gonna do movie math tomorrow because the numbers are slow coming back in uh, the day after Christmas but passengers it's not good 
So maybe if the story had come out a little earlier and it had gotten, she's been, she's been basically, so let me tell you what's happening. So Jennifer Lawrence, apparently since 2013, every Christmas Eve, she goes and visits the Louisville Norton's Children's Hospital in her native Kentucky. And it's a, it's a, it's a hospital near and dear to her heart. It's a, it's a cause she believes in. And not only does she go and visit them every Christmas Eve, but she's actually donated $2 million to open the Jennifer Lawrence Foundation Cardiac Intensive Care Unit. Wow, how awesome is that? And so I think it's wonderful. And these photos are so nice. And I just, I think it's, it's a really nice thing to do. And I'm surprised that I haven't heard of it until now, considering the fact this is her third uh, her third year, um, well, actually her fourth year doing it. So uh, her PR team should have been doing a little bit of a better job getting that out there. Like, why is this story so rare to see, but that Hawaiian sacred so stones itching her butt on Hawaiian sacred stone stories, you know, was like wildfire. I know negative stories are uh, more interesting and they tend to spread a little bit more than positive stories, but that's why Jennifer Lawrence has a publicity team to make sure that the positive stories get out there as well. So I think that, you know, she's had a really bad news cycle of uh, demanding more money uh, and making, now, I think there's nothing wrong with wanting to be paid what you're worth, but she's been saying, like, I'm going to hold movies hostage if I don't get paid enough. I'm in it. She, she's made it seem like she's in it for the money more than the craft. And that never sits well with, uh, you know, anybody who's not making millions of dollars a year. Also, the Mystique situation where she took a beloved character and kind of ran it into the ground. Uh, and again, that Hawaiian story. She's just in a really bad place, I think, image-wise. And I think that's part of the reason Passengers isn't doing well. Because she, I'm going to review Passengers later today. I think she did a great job in the movie, uh, even if I think she was miscast. So I think that, I think Jennifer Lawrence's 2017 New Year's resolution should be to fix her image stat <laughs> and to hold on to the money she was paid for passengers because she might end up needing it but it's wonderful to see her you know to making such a large um donation to the children's hospital and then going to visit as well great story she needs to work on making more headlines like that uh, and i'm doing my part in spreading the news to you all right so the third story of the day is that the bad moms uh, movie is getting a sequel. As you might recall, we discussed this a couple of months ago. The Bad Moms did so well in theaters, 180 million worldwide, that's amazing, that Sticks had greenlit Bad Dads for next summer. And, you know, it didn't look so good because it was like, oh, you don't want to pay your actresses for a sequel, so you're going to, you know, show them the door and go with Bad Dads, right? That's how you're going to capitalize on the success. But maybe they were maybe there was a difficult it was difficult to negotiate a sequel deal, but they've come together and now they're gonna do a bad mom's Christmas movie, which I think is a fabulous idea. Because of course moms are intimately involved in planning Christmas, and I think that it's a very stressful time for moms, all parents, of course. Uh, and I'm glad they are making a bad dad's movie. Uh, but I think, you know, so often, you know, this Christmas season I've watched like Jingle All the Way, um, the Santa Claus, and they really show dads struggling to, you know, to live up to their responsibilities and their kids' expectations at Christmas. And the moms make it, and in these movies, it makes it seem like the moms, it's like easy for them, right? So I think it's a great idea to show how difficult Christmas is for mom, who has a tremendous responsibility to make Christmas amazing for their kids and their family, right? So I think it's a fabulous idea. So this is set to come out November 3rd, 2017. Uh, Bad Moms was a bit of a raunchy movie, and we've seen like uh, Office Christmas Party not do so well, and The Night Before didn't do so well with Seth Rogen last year. So hopefully they can find a good, they can strike a good balance. I think it certainly helps that the first one was such a huge hit. And more and more people are discovering it all the time um, on, uh, you know, seeing it on airplanes, on streaming. It's done very well on iTunes, so the audience continues to grow. So good for Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and Katherine Hahn, who uh, have been rewarded for the their, their, their contributions and headlining that first successful film. But even cooler is that they're going to have new characters and that for this uh, Bad Moms Christmas, not only are the Bad Moms going to have to deal with this like mega mom holiday, but their own mothers are going to come to visit to double down on the stress. And so I think that's going to be great. And it's a great opportunity for some uh, other act older actresses to join the cast. And I'd be curious to see what kind of dynamics they're going to create. Because there are so many different types of relationships that mothers and daughters can have, I, I think it'll be great to highlight, you know, three of them. Now, also interesting, though, is that this is going to be following Snatched, which comes out this summer with uh, Amy Schumer and Goldie Hawn. That trailer, of course, just debuted uh, like last week. So that's a very similar premise of a, a, you know, a mother and a daughter and exploring that relationship. So it'll be interesting to see which one 
does better. But I'm curious, do you think Bad Moms is a movie you'd be interested in seeing? Uh, I still have yet to watch the first Bad Moms. I better get on that. Uh, but this sounds to me like I think Styx is really trying to grow the bad the bad parents, I guess you could say, franchise as fast as they possibly can. And I think they're doing a very nice job with it so far. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. Now, the viewer question comes from Zakaria Tariq. And Zakaria Tariq says, Hi, Grace. I'm hoping to be an author one day. Fantastic. And I wanted to ask, how does a book series like The Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter get a movie adaptation? And then you're my favorite YouTuber to watch and a couple of emojis. Ah, thank you, Zakaria. And I think that is a, um, a, a wonderful ambition. Uh, but I would, I would caution you to make sure that you really truly want to just be an author, not an author whose books are adapted into movies because that's tough. And also, you know, for instance, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien wasn't alive when the Lord of the Rings movies were made. So it could be done posthumously. So uh, I think it's a good end goal to have your books turn into a movie. Uh, but I, I wouldn't count on it. You know, it's like we talk about like, oh, you know, it would be great if you could get a sequel, but focus on, you know, we just talked about this with Assassin's Creed. Focus on the movie that you're making at the moment, the first one. And so I would say focus on writing the best book you possibly can. Keep an eye on it being a movie, potentially, so you make sure you have things that a movie studio would be looking for, but just make sure the book is good. Not only for your own sanity and expectations, but also because um, if it's not good, they won't pick it up. And now some people might be like, I've seen a lot of bad movies adapted from books, but most of the times the books were good and something was lost in translation. So ask your question, Sakaria. This is how books become movies. And I'm going to go with current ones. Now, Lord of the Rings, of course, was a very famous uh, series of books for decades. And so eventually someone said, I want to make a movie out of it. But that was, of course, again, was done posthumously. That's a totally different situation. I think you're obviously hoping for the J.K. Rowling situation where you're still alive and you become a billionaire off of, and you get to also creative control of the property. That's amazing. That's very unlikely. Also, forget creative control. I think that's almost... It's almost unheard of. Harry Potter was such a sensation that she was able, J.K. Rowling was able to get it. Uh, but it's, it's very, it's very unusual unless you have a book that sells that well. E.L. James has creative control, but that's also because her, her book was just so popular. Uh, I think, though, for instance, Stephanie Meyer from Twilight, well, she was very intimately involved in the, pu in the publicity for the movies. She actually did not, I think, have that much creative control. All right, so anyway, this is the way a book gets turned into a movie. So one way is your book sells very well. And so they decide to make a movie out of it because they're like, oh, you know, Hollywood loves uh, an established brand. So they're able to say, ah, oh, based off the bestseller. So that's always a plus for you. So one, number one, it does well in sales. Uh, number two, which is, uh, you know, a little bit harder to do, a producer reads your book and likes it, right? And decides to make a movie out of it. Now that can happen a couple of ways. One, they just happen to pick it up one day. At the, the producer or the studio executive is looking for something to read. They pick up your book. They love it. They make a movie out of it, right? Or they sometimes they'll option it, and a movie might never get made of it, but you'll get your check, and you can move on to write your next book. Uh, but another way is, is that your agent will send it to a producer or a studio and say, read my, read my client's book. It's awesome. Maybe you want to make a movie out of it. Now, sometimes also the publisher will send the manuscript before the movie, the book is even published to the studios or the production companies to see if they're interested in optioning it before it become, before it's even published. Uh, and so th in that way, you want to see what kind of publisher that you can get, right? So you want to maybe get some, like all the big publishers have uh, relationships with Hollywood. And so you maybe want to see who in particular maybe gets books sold a lot and they'll send your uh, manuscript out as well to see if maybe they can, if they can package it where someone goes, oh, it's been purchased, it's gonna be, you know, that's a way to sell the book. They're like, the, the movie rights have already been sold, it's a huge deal. So that was the way that it happens. Now if you, so I would say if you wanna like increase the odds, Zakaria, of your book being a movie, you should think of something that's genre-y, uh, you should target an audience, and you should think of something that would be visually interesting, right? Also, you know, uh, you know, existential books aren't going to do particularly well, but a mystery or a thriller, a fantasy book, something like that. Uh, and also, you know, it's all about when the craze hits. You know, with Harry Potter, everyone tried to have, uh, you know, to have 
you know, that's why Percy Jackson got picked up, but you know, nobody could really duplicate Harry Potter's success. And then when Twilight was successful, that's when they went after Mortal Instruments and, and uh, Fifty Shades, because they were trying to duplicate that success. So if you have, a, if you're able to write very quickly and do a fast turnaround, maybe you could see what books are doing well in the marketplace and say, well, how can I do something that's similar to that? And be like, hey, have you finished the book and then you're waiting, looking for something to read? Well, mine is similar. And also look at Lemony Snicket. That's an interesting book series that's uh, found a second life as a TV series on Netflix. Uh, in just a few weeks, it will be debuting. Uh, but, you know, but it's a, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I know that publicity often makes it seem like it's a sprint, like these things happen overnight, but that's not really the case. So just, you know, I would always be a very savvy person when you're in these uh, kind of careers. Really know your market. Know what's, what, what, are the, what the changes in the market are so you can see them on the horizon. Uh, very often the people in the know in the industry will know what hot books are on the horizon see who the popular authors are, see who the big publishing houses are, know who the good literary agents are as well. Just get to know that business. I mean, it's a business just like Hollywood, uh, and so you need to make sure that you know how that operates as well. And also you can self-publish uh, on, on places like Amazon, but your book better be a huge hit. And so think to yourself, go look at what the top selling books are and be like, okay, well, what do people want to read? Uh, what's selling well? Make sure you, you know, and sometimes you have a story that you're just burning to tell, but sometimes, you know, it's a business and you want to write something that people want to read, right? That's another way to go about it. So think about what kind of author you want to be as well. But it looks to me like you want to be one who gets your books turned into movies, so you're going to have to be really smart about it. So I hope that was helpful, uh, Zakaria. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas if you were celebrating. Uh, and write down below in today's top three stories, the viewer question, anything you'd like to cover tomorrow, any questions that you might have. Thanks for watching. Bye.